in our house one of the most popular projects that we've done, and we did it years ago, is our art ledge um, above our sofa in the living room. We are going to show you how we built that. You only need a few supplies. So we have a uh, one by 12 board. You can do it whatever length you want. Uh, the one that we're using is 10 feet long. Uh, that's what we have in our living room. We also have some one and a quarter inch wood screws, two inch wood screws, and then Minwax pre-stain because we're using pine. We have our actual stain and then a polycrylic uh, to put on afterwards. Brushes to do all of that and a sanding block, some clamps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this one board and turn it into our three pieces that we need. We have a five and a half inch wide piece that we're going to cut and then a three and a half inch wide piece and then a one inch wide piece. So we'll run that through the table saw. If you don't have a table saw, you can do this just at Lowe's. You can ask them to cut the boards for you um, or whatever hardware store you go to. A lot of times they will have somebody on site who can cut the wood for you. If you're using a table saw and cutting a piece this long, you wanna have somebody on the end who can catch it and keep it from falling on. Um, what I'm gonna do is I have a table set up on the back that it's just gonna extend onto and uh, that will keep it from, um, you know, flipping up and me having to push my hands into the blade. Um, I'm actually going to do a three quarter inch on the uh, small one instead of one inch. Now that these are cut, we're just going to uh, join them together with some simple wood screws. But first I'm going to clamp them so that when I screw them together, they kind of stay in place. So we'll turn this up here, line up the edges, and we'll put our clamps. Okay. okay, now that this is clamped in place, we're gonna use a 1 8 inch drill bit to pre-drill our holes. This will guide the screws uh, straight into the wood instead of splitting the wood and kind of shooting out the sides. Um, and we're just going to do them every, I don't know, 16 inches or so. I'm going to want one where my clamp is as well. So I'm going to just save that and then move in 16 inches-ish and uh, we'll go from there. Go kind of slow so that you can guide the bit straight and uh, if you do start to break through, you can stop before it gets too bad. And you want to kind of countersink it so it sits just below the surface or flush with the surface. Now we'll remove the clamps on these sides and add some screws on each end. Now for the three quarter inch piece, we're gonna do the same thing. Clamp it on the front here. And uh, instead, we're also gonna pre-drill holes very shallowly. And instead of using the two inch screws, one and a quarter. Our next step is to just sand the corners and edges, places where we've cut and maybe there's some, uh, some wood splintering off and we're just gonna smooth it out. In order to use our wood conditioner, our Minwax wood conditioner, uh, we want to sand the wood and kind of open it up a little bit so that it accepts it a little bit better. And this is just a fine grit uh, sanding block, 220. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than like a 160, but even that's a little rough. So somewhere at 200 to 250 would work great for this. We're gonna get all of the dust off before we wood condition. This is wood conditioner. It's meant to be used before staining on softwoods, especially things like pine. Um, it helps prepare the wood to accept the stain a little bit better. And so 
Uh, this is what we're going to use as step one. We apply a coat across the whole thing and then we wait 5, 10, 15 minutes or so and then just brush off any of the excess that hasn't dried. The way that you do this depends on how dark you want it. If you want it to be pretty dark, you could uh, put it on and leave it on there for a while before you wipe it off, or you could do multiple coats. Um, if you want something a little bit lighter, you can do one area and then wipe it off and do another area and then wipe it off. Um, and we're going to go kind of for a medium tone, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, stain the whole thing and then just wipe it off as soon as I'm done staining it. This is looking really, really nice, but the final step is to keep it looking nice for a really long time by adding a coat of polycrylic. We're going with the clear matte finish, which won't affect uh, the finish that we have now. Um, it won't make it shiny or anything. It'll just kind of maintain its rich, kind of more rustic look. Um, with the polycrylic, you want to stir it and keep it stirred as you're working on it. We'll just give it a quick stir and then carefully in long strokes we'll add a coat of this across the entire thing. The recommendation is three coats of polycrylic. Um, two hours of drying time in between each coat which is pretty long but this is still a quick enough project that you can get it all done in one day. After the sealer is dry, you are ready to hang your art ledge, and it's super, super simple to hang. I'll show you what we did. First, we determined how high we wanted the ledge on the wall. We, um, for us, in our sofa height, we determined that 41 and a quarter inches was just the right height. It still felt like part of the sofa, but high enough that no one's hitting their head. Uh, and then we just um, held up the ledge against the wall and we marked where all the studs were on the wall and also on the back of the ledge. Took it back outside, pre-drilled those holes and then we just brought it in and screwed straight from the back of the ledge into the stud and it's not going anywhere. And then loaded it up with art.